event by Christina Dominicini. Uh, she is an Intel software innovator. Uh, she is assistant professor at Federal Institute of Espirito Santo, uh, or for short, IEF, IEFES Brazil. Uh, she has a BSc degree from UFES, an MSc degree in electrical engineering from University of Sao Paulo, both in Brazil. Her previous research experiences include internships in Alcatel Lucent and Microsoft Research, and projects with Ericsson Research. Her interests include NFV, STN, and next generation networks. Currently, she works with Intel DPDK and OpenStack Technologies. So with that, I give over the floor to Christina. Christina, take it away. Uh, she is uh, uh, not here, so she will be actually presenting from Brazil. OK, thank you, Sujata. Good evening. Um, today I'm going to present our work, NFV orchestration over a fully programmable SDN infrastructure for a small data center. And this is the team that works in, the, in this project, Gilmar, Leonardo, Rodolfo, Mateus, Moises, and Magnus. The roadmap for my presentation, firstly, the motivation of our work, our proposal, the prototype and the results, a discussion about safety function chain, and finally, the conclusions. Emerging trends in telecommunication, such as edge computing and IoT, demand the creation of distributed small data centers that can provide virtualized network functions at the edge of current networks. To accomplish this, it is necessary to have efficient infrastructure management to meet demanding requirements, such as low cost, high bandwidth, low latency, and dynamic service requests. However, traditional networks cannot deal with these requirements as they have high costs and limited support for innovation. For example, uh, they offer few mechanisms for complex fast chain and network, network reconfiguration and also, um, their packed routing and forwarding is not optimized. In summary, it's very hard to build a NFV solution that integrates the underlying network and the orchestration decisions. So our proposal, called Vistify, was created to tackle these issues. We published last year a paper in the IEEE NFVSDN conference. The focus there was the virtualized infrastructure manager, and the results were part of Gilmar Vassolet's thesis. Now we extended that paper, and uh, the focus of this new paper is NFV orchestration, and we submitted, submitted the paper to IEEE journal. Just to show you a bit of the uh, general picture, traditional networks, data center networks, are based on network-centric architectures, as you can see in the picture, where servers virtualize network functions and switches forward the traffic. Our proposal is based on switchless server-centric topologies where servers are responsible for both virtualization and forwarding. In our paper, uh, we define several challenges to provide NFV in small data centers and presented some design principles to meet these challenges, such as um, server-centric topology, standard servers, software switches, and programmable secret switches. Uh, 
using that principle, we propose Vitify architecture as a fully programmable infrastructure based on a switchless architecture for small data centers. The scope we are considering here is up to 512 standard servers, and the goal is to provide programmable SDN mechanisms to the NFV orchestrator. In this way, the orchestrator has more access to information about the network infrastructure and can actuate on nodes and links. Our final goal here is to provide efficient NFV in small data centers. Our architecture is based on NFV ETSI standard. Uh, the modification we did here is that our physical resources are represented by servers with software switches programmable circuit switches, and server-centric topologies. So we don't have hardware switches on our hardware resources. Christina, so this is all OPNFV. Uh, you're using the stacks on the OPNFV here? Uh, I, I will show the, the prototype information. Uh, we okay. use OpenStack and other uh, frameworks from OPNFV, and we are also exploring OPNFV framework. Okay. Uh, I have another question. What yes. are these uh, circuit switches? Sorry, I couldn't. What hear. What are these circuit switches? Um, yeah. I will explain in the prototype. They are simple optical switches. So I will explain, explain better in the are, next slide. So these are layer one switches? Sorry? It's hard to these hear. are layer one switches? Yeah, like they, they are simple optical OTN switches. The switches. So so they can, uh, you can do the optical switching in a uh, physical layer. I, I will show some some of the, this information. Okay. Um, so as a proof of concept, we implemented a prototype, and uh, I will uh, detail how we implemented each of the components of the architecture that I presented in the last slide. So. Um, the prototype is an uh, eight node test bed in a switchless data center network architecture. So we have here a 3D hyper cube. We chose this topology because it has a stateless source routing based on Excel operation. It, allows, it also allows the insertion of these optical switches without changing the, uh, the way the routing is done and it has multiple paths between pairs of nodes. We could use other topologies, as long as they also uh, offer some kind of uh, source routing. Uh, besides the service, we also uh, added some optical switches. They are simple, uh, low-cost optical switches. Uh, they have a magnetical optical operation and they are able to do the switching in sub millisecond response time. Uh, for the server nodes, the components are uh, the VNS itself, the hypervisor, the operating system, the virtual switch, in our case OVS, a monitor model, that provides information about the server and the hardware resources. We have to modify OVS because uh, we need to implement the hypercube source routing in OVS data path because we were not using default uh, open flow tables. We also had to implement an uh, open flow enabler for the optical switches. Uh, we used a, a board with Linux and OVS. It 
because the optical switches do not talk in open, they do not talk in open flow, so we need some something to uh, transmit the message to them. So ISDN controller sends a custom open flow message to the OVS, which sends commands to optical switches. So for the DIM in the architecture, the Visualized Infrastructure Manager, we used OpenStack, and it was responsible for managing the VNF virtualization and the virtual networks. The SDN controller was implemented using HU, and it's responsible for building the hyper queue by configuring the OVS of each server and also for rewiring the physical links using the optical switches, and for managing the status of nodes and links of our prototype. It's also important to understand the addressing and routing in our architecture. Um, in our architecture, the global ID is replaced by positional ID. So we use the bits of the MAC address. The first part is used to represent the hypercube address of the physical server. And the second part, the VNF ID. So what happens is during the routing, we, we do not rely on open flow tables and switches. And uh, the forwarding servers use only the first part of the MAC address. Uh, and they use this first part to uh, perform an XOR operation and to define the next hope. And the second part of the MAC address, destination address, is used only by the destination server to identify the destination of VNF. So to prove these concepts, we uh, execute some tests in the prototype, and the goal was to evaluate the trend traffic impact over the server nodes, to test the optical switching, and to test NFV dynamic orchestration. In the test, the NFV orchestrator receives information about server loads and network traffic and reconfigures optical links to distribute the traffic. I will show uh, one test for you to give you an idea, but uh, more detailed results can be found in the paper. In this test, in the first 10 seconds, there are no flows in the network. And all the CPU capacity of H3, you can see in green in the graph, all the CPU capacity of H3 is being used to serve virtual machines that are hosted in H3. At instant 10 seconds, a VM in H4 sends a flow to H1, and H3 starts to forward traffic and part of its capacity will be used to forward traffic. So in the graph, it's possible to see that not all the traffic is reaching H1. If you see the blue line in the graph, you see that uh, the, tra the traffic sent by H1, that's the red one, is uh, higher than the traffic received by H1. So what happens is H3 is saturated. So at instant four, 40 seconds, the optical switch receives a command to change from bar to cross state. And this will create a direct connection from H4 to H1, as you, we can see here in the second cube figure. So it's possible to see that now the user process we'll have again 100% of H3 CPU capacity in the green line. And the traffic is reaching H1 because there is a direct connection between H4 and H1, 
and the H3 is no longer forwarding traffic. Uh, you can also see uh, more of these results in the paper. Uh, we extended this work uh, in the first paper we were focusing on the infrastructure and in the programmable mechanisms. And then we extended our work to provide a novel uh, service function, function chain solution. I will not have time here to give um, details about the solution, but uh, using um, the hyperkeep routing in layer two, we were able to provide a distributed solution for SFC, and uh, instead of concentrating Concentrating the SFC in few harder switches, we can distribute SFC in the softer switch of the servers and using the routing to disaccoplate SFC from the routing solution. In our new paper, we provide detailed information about the architecture and how orchestration is performed in V5. And our tests for SFC show that uh, we can achieve uh, SFC performance close to the known FC scenario. This is the uh, results from our new paper. So um, finally, the conclusions. I don't have much time today to talk about them but uh, I will also uh, answer some questions. So we proposed this novel orchestration solution uh, for a fully programmable infrastructure for small data centers. Our solution is based on switchless topologies, and we, uh, test, uh, we tested this concept in a real test bed with hypercube topology. And the results indicate that the NECV orchestrator has more information about physical infrastructure using SDN. And it's also able to make more efficient decisions and to provide bulk load distribution by reconfiguring nodes and links. We also worked in this extension, and we could uh, provide SFC in this architecture. And uh, as future works, we are including uh, DPDK. We are also exploring other server-centric topologies apart from the hypercube. And we are testing routing mechanisms that do not depend on the topology. So we can uh, have source routing independently of the topology we are using. So thank you. I think I could do everything in my 10 minutes. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I have one question. Is there a reason why you chose hypercube topology? Um, yes, let me uh, return to let me return here to the slide. Okay, so uh, there were some reasons. Uh, we we offered a uh, general architecture, and we used uh, the hypercube only as proof of concept. So uh, the reason we chose Hypercube as a proof of, of concept was that it has a native source routing. It's based in a very simple XOR operation, so we can do it very fast, and we need to do forwarding very fast. That, that was the reason. And uh, also, we could, uh, it, the topology allows us to include these optical switches, and the, the inclusion of these optical switches does not change the routing, and that's also a very nice property of hypercube. 
And uh, another thing that we didn't export yet, but Hypercube offers multiple paths between pair of nodes. So we can uh, do load balancing, we can uh, explore resilience, and other things like that. But we could use any other topology. We, we are exploring server-centric topologies. Uh, normally, they are used for HPC, high-performance computing. Uh, we could use Mesh, Toros. And uh, we are also exploring a source routing solution that we could use any topology. And this is uh, something we are working in our next uh, paper. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, thank you. Another important thing to, to uh, say here, Sujata, is that uh, we are trying to uh, decrease the lookup time. So if we are using false routing mechanisms, and instead of uh, lookup tables in open flow tables, we we have uh, we are trying to do folding in a faster way, and this is one of the reasons we use server centric topologies. Okay, thank you. Is there a reason for using the real controller? Why didn't you decide to go with Open Daylight or Onos, which are probably more popular? Uh, we we also export Open Daylight. We we, we are using in other projects. Uh, we use VU because uh, the learning curve is uh, is much easier than Open Daylight. So for uh, producing a prototype. In a short time, we we thought it was simply simple to use um, EU, but uh, we could use Open Daylight. Um, we are using standard open source, so I think we could do exactly the same with Open Daylight. Yes, yeah, so I guess now we'll have to move on. In the interest of time. Thank you, Christina for this excellent okay. presentation. Thank you, Sujata. My email address is here. If anybody has any doubt, uh, feel free to send me an email. Yeah, maybe you can show the 